Hey people of the internet, today I'm going to teach you how to make an animated social media thing. So you'll see these quote cards around the internet on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. They used to be really good for engagement, but not so much these days because everyone else is doing them. So one way of standing out from everybody else is by upping your production value on a little bit. And you can do that with animation, so I'm going to show you how to do that today. In this example, I'm aiming to engage self-made business people, so entrepreneurship quotes seem like a good fit. A quick Google search and we've already found some usable quotes. You have to see failure as the beginning and the middle, but never entertain it as an end. I'm happy with this one. Once you've found a quote relevant for your niche, we need to find some images to go along with it. Pexels is a solid option because the images on here are free to use and edit, even for commercial use. The aim here is to use visuals to amplify what's being said in the quote. So for mine, the idea of journey, overcoming a challenge. Well, hey, look at this guy who's won a boxing match. Perfect. I'm going to use that. So once you've downloaded the image, it's time to open up After Effects. Create a new composition. I'm calling mine Social Quote Template. Going to use an aspect ratio of 1 by 1 at 1080 pixels. You can set the duration to whatever you like, but for this example, I'm going to set it to 10 seconds. Now, my editing lecturer back in university loved bins so much so that we had at least four lessons on file structure. As annoying as they were, he's kind of right. You'll run into less problems on bigger projects if you keep a tidy workspace. So the next stage is creating the border. Click the rectangle button or Q. Turn off the fill by clicking on the word fill, not the box next to it. And on the pop-up, press the box with the red line through it. Set the stroke to a width you're happy with. Click back on the timeline and then double click on the rectangle tool. And there you go, just like magic it appears. Let's put some text in there. Either click on the text tool at the top or press Ctrl and T. You can add whatever you like. I'm gonna use my company's name and that's massive. That's absolutely ridiculous. Let's sort that out straight away. Flop in between the selection tool, which is V, and the hand tool, which is H. So I can easily navigate the workspace and select what I need to do. I think this would look nicer with a heavier font type. I'm using Monster App because it's one of my go-to fonts, but it's always wise to use a font which reflects the brand you're designing for. If you want to check mine out, look on my Instagram page at jcunliffeuk. I'll leave a link in the description below. And next, we're going to copy the text and then drag it to the bottom of the border, which is Control c and Control v in case this is your first time using a computer. <laughs> so if you hold Shift whilst you're dragging down, it'll lock it vertically so it just won't go roaming off on you. It's worth aligning it to the right as well. Yeah, again, just drag it across and take your time to get the spacing right. I'm going to throw my company's tagline here. But again, you can put any information that you like. This whole thing is looking a little two dimensional, so let's add a little depth to it. We're going to make another square, but this time we're going to fill it without the stroke. This is going to go in the bottom left hand corner. We're going to tilt it 45 degrees. Before we tilt it, we need to change the center point from the middle of the canvas to the middle of the square. You can grab the anchor point tool from the top or use the shortcut Y. Drag it across so it's at the center of the square and then you can click V to deselect the tool. Then you can click on the shape layer in the left side of the timeline. If you hit R, it'll bring up the rotation controls. And if you type in 45 degrees, that should set it perfectly. Now, we're gonna go get a drop shadow. So let's type that into our effects panel. Once you've got that, just drag it over the shape, let it go. I want the shadow to drop towards the center of the canvas, so I'm going to change the direction. Toggle the distance and softness too until you get an effect you're happy with. And congratulations, that's enough three dimensionality to ruin a flat earther's core belief system. The space it leaves is a little empty though, so let's put some text in there. You could actually get a logo in there if you really wanted to rebel against the system, but in this example I'm sticking with text. I want to position this along the outer border. You can turn on the grid to help with this by selecting the view tab at the top. Now, if I was a smarter person, I'd have just toggled off the shape layer. Thinking outside of the box would have saved a little time here. 
you can turn the grid off with control plus comma. Now select everything in the timeline, right click and then choose pre-compose. It's just a way of grouping all of your assets together. So think of it like a group in Photoshop. You can double click into any composition to change the things within it. Time to bring in our photo. Make sure it's sitting under the border in the timeline. Hit S for scale and P for position to get your image framed up how you'd like it. I'm going to put the text on the left, so I'd like some space on that side. Go grab the quote you wanted to use and copy it. With the text tool selected, draw out a text box by left clicking, holding down and dragging on your canvas. Copy it in and then it's a matter of making the style fit again. So take as long as you need, spend as much time as you want on the sizing and the spacing, the font weight and the font height. And now we're going to animate the text. So go back to your effects menu. I'm going to use slow fade on. But you can really use any of them. There's loads. Typewriter is another good one if you want to do something different. Once you've chosen your effect, drag it over the text. And when you hit play, you should see it animate. It's my preference that the text shows on the start frame of the video as well. That way, when people see it on social media as a still, it immediately cuts to an image without the text, which is more likely to pull someone's attention in. So to do that, I move the animation keyframes a single frame forward and then toggle the offset back to 100%. I'll show you what I mean on my business's Instagram page. If you'd like to show your support, give us a follow over at Brass Bear Films as well. Thanks in advance if you do. It's always worth adding the name of the person who gave the quote as well. Once you've framed it up in a way you're happy with, throw on another copy of the animation effect. Move those keyframes around until you get something which feels right. I like the name appearing after the quote. We're gonna make sure that the start frame has the name on as well. So we're gonna grab the first keyframe of the animation, copy it and paste it to the second frame into the timeline. And then on the first frame, turn the offset to 100%. Still doesn't have enough animated elements. Let's fix that. If you hold down the rectangle tool, it'll give you some options to change the shape. Let's grab the ellipse tool. Now back in the bottom left of the timeline, if you go to the shape layer and click add, there should be one called repeater. If you click on that, and then in repeater one under transform, let's change the position. Then add another repeater on top of that. On the second set of units on the position, we'll toggle that to space out the new dots so they go vertically. And we'll add some more copies as well. Mess around with the positions for as long as you need to in order to get the spacing right. Right people, we're going to flash some dots now. I'm going to wait until the text has faded on and then I'm going to start the animation from there. In the shape layer under repeater 2, change the start opacity and end opacity to 0% and set the keyframes. Then move forward a couple of frames and turn the start opacity to 100%. Set another 0% keyframe for end opacity. Move forward again a similar amount of frames and then set both of them to 100% then copy and paste the previous two keyframes next. And then finally the start keyframes. With all the frames selected hit F9 for easy ease which puts a curve on the speed at which the animation plays out making it feel more fluid and less rigid. Now we're gonna use something called a looping expression. So we don't have to copy and paste more keyframes. It'll just keep repeating over and over. To add expressions, you alt click on the stopwatch. And in this instance, we're gonna type out, loop out, open parenthesis, type equals quotation mark, cycle quotation mark, comma, num keyframes equals zero close parenthesis or if you want to play it on easy mode scroll down to the description and copy and paste it because i left it there for you 
So that saved you some time, you can thank me by subscribing. So now you'll see that the animation loops on repeat, which is pretty damn sweet. If you want the circle design assets on the start frame as well, we need to do one final thing. Find the start point of the animation and cut the clip at that point with Alt plus open bracket. Copy and paste that shape layer and then drag it all the way to the start of the timeline so the first frame has the detailed element. Congratulations, you've made your own social media thing. Get it added to Media Coder and export it. Become a social media marketing agency legend. It's in your hands now. You have the tools. You have the tools to do it. You are now a self-sufficient social media animating genius. Go, go wow your clients with this newfound skill. So thanks for watching. Hopefully I've not just wasted 10 minutes of your time. If you've actually got value out of this, it'd be great if you could subscribe and leave a comment. You know, it'd allow me to continue making these videos, which I'd quite like to do. See ya.